Hi again, I'm Robert Reinhardt of Streaming Media Producer, here for AJA Video Systems. In this sponsored tutorial, I'll show you how to capture video over USB 3.0 with the AJA UTAP 3G SDI and HDMI devices. Each of these devices has an MSRP of $439 and is available to purchase now. Let's take a quick look at each device and explore a couple of ways to use them in production. I'm holding the HDMI version of the AJA UTAP. Look how small it is, about the size of my palm. The durable metal chassis is fanless and measures three and a quarter inches long by two and three eighths inches wide and less than an inch deep, just a hair over seven eighths of an inch. The left side of the unit has a USB 3 type B port along with the status LED indicator and a power LED indicator. The status indicator will be a solid green if it's connected to a USB 3 port on your computer or a solid red if it's connected to a USB 2 port. You need to use a USB 3.0 port or better to operate the UTAP. One of the reasons I prefer to use the AJA UTAP is that it has a wired connection between the chassis and the computer. Some cheaper HDMI capture units plug directly into the USB port of the computer and as such require more clearance. The right side of the chassis has an HDMI input port, as well as a lock LED indicator. This indicator will be red if the HDMI source is HD resolution, or green if the source is SD resolution. No additional hardware driver installation is required for the UTAP. It should work right out of the box on current versions of Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. AJA also provides a three-year warranty for the UTAP much longer than most competitors on the market. The SDI version of the UTAP by AJA has the same chassis size as the HDMI version. The status, power, and USB ports are exactly the same as the HDMI version. The only difference, of course, is that we have an SDI input on the right, as well as an SDI loop out below it. You can use the SDI loop out to continue the SDI signal into the rest of your video system configuration if you need it. Now I'm going to demo using the SDI version of the UTAP with OBS Studio. For this demo, I'm using version 30 of OBS Studio on my MacBook Pro running Ventura. Before we can capture from the UTAP, we need to connect it to the USB-C port of my MacBook Pro. For this demo, I purchased a separate USB-C to USB Type-B cable. Let's plug the USB Type-B cable into the chassis. And now I'll plug the USB-C end into my MacBook Pro. Once it's plugged in, I should see the status indicators turn to green as well as the power to green. And I can see I've got an amber or red color on the SDI input indicating an HD resolution input. Now back in OBS, we're going to add a new source. To add a new source, we go to the sources panel and click the add source button and choose video capture device. In this dialog box, I'm going to rename the device to AJA UTAP. And from the device drop down in the properties dialog box, I'm going to choose the UTAP ID. It will usually start with UT hyphen VID. Immediately I see the source coming in. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm ready to set up my OBS scene. I'm going to reorder the logo on top of the UTAP source. I'm going to cut it to go live. And now I'm ready to show this visual of the UTAP on my live stream. When you're ready to start streaming, click the Start Streaming button.
In the last example in OBS Studio on my MacBook Pro, which I have opened here, you'll notice that the properties for the AJA UTAP, which I named myself here at the top of the properties bar, had this device name, UTVID. It didn't exactly cry out as being the UTAP among all the devices I had connected on my MacBook Pro. A recent firmware update released by AJA fixes the device name so that it's more easily found in a device list. Let's go ahead and update the UTAP for SDI devices that I currently have connected to this MacBook Pro. I'm going to cancel this properties box and close OBS. And you can see I already have the AJA.com website loaded here in Chrome. Once you're on the home page, go ahead and click support. On the support page, click downloads and move over to the streaming products. And from this drop down, choose the UTAP you have. I have the UTAP SDI connected right now, so I'm going to select that. And it will take you to the UTAP SDI support page. Right away, I can see there's a software header. I'm going to click that. It's already detected that I'm on a Mac, so it's showing me the Mac version of this UTAP firmware updater. If you're on Windows, or if you want to force another operating system, you can click the other operating systems that are listed. I'm going to go back to the Mac. Go ahead and click this link and it will give you a description and version of the firmware release and you can click the download button. If you want to sign up for AJA updates I encourage you to go ahead and do so. I'm already registered with AJA for updates so I'm going to continue to download without sign up. This will go ahead and prompt you to download the file. On my system, I have it prompt so I can choose my location. I might automatically just go into your downloads folder. I've already downloaded and installed the UTAP firmware updater. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. You should find it in your applications folder on a Mac or in your Windows menu after it's been installed. Just search for AJA. I'm going to use a spotlight search and I'll just type in AJA and I can see there is the UTEP updater. And right now it's saying there's no module connected. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in now and click scan for UTAPs. It's going to give me a warning that it's going to cease all video and audio capture. Go ahead and click OK. And it shows me a picture of the UTAP, showing that it's the SDI version. And it's showing me that I have currently installed the 1.6 version of the CPU firmware, as well as the 1.11 version of the FPGA firmware. The latest version for both of these respectively is 1.11 and 1.13. Make sure you don't plug in any other AJA devices while doing this update and also, make sure that your computer is plugged into power if you're on a laptop. I'm going to click the update button. And it will proceed to update both firmwares, starting with the CPU firmware and then moving to the FPGA firmware. Again, don't be tempted to do anything else with your device or anything else on the operating system. Don't start multitasking with other applications while it is updating the firmware. This process does take a little bit of time, so you may want to walk away and have a drink, a coffee. I'm going to fast forward the recording so that we can get to the next step. Once the firmware has been updated, it's going to ask you to power cycle the UTAP before using it again. Click OK to this dialog box. Go ahead and unplug the UTAP. And I'm going to plug it back in. 
click the scan for UTAPs. And now I can see that it is refreshing with the latest installed updates. Go ahead and close the updater. I'm going to go back to OBS Studio. And if I click on the UTAP source, I will need to choose the device again because this ID is no longer valid. I'm going to click in here and I should see now a full name, AJA UTAP video with an ID after it. I'll see an instant update to my source. Click OK. And now we're back in business. If you've configured an older UTAP with any other video software, make sure you go in and reconfigure to choose the new device name after the firmware update. Now I'm going to demo the UTAP for HDMI devices with Zoom. In this demo, I'm running Zoom on Windows 11. As you can see, I'm already in a waiting room for a Zoom meeting. Here, we can test our speaker and microphone as well as our video capture device. Let's connect the UTAP for HDMI devices to the PC. Using the provided cable with the box, I'm going to connect the USB Type-B connector into the chassis and the other end into the Windows PC. Once it's connected, we can see the green status light as well as the green power light. The HDMI cable from the camera is already plugged in and audio is coming over it. Back in Zoom, I'm going to click the test speaker and microphone link. This will open the settings dialog box. I'm going to switch over to the video settings and make sure that the UTAP is selected. We want to make sure that the HD box is checked as well as the original ratio. I typically do not mirror the video when I'm using a device to capture from camera. Let's go to the audio section. And in the microphone area, we want to change this to the digital audio interface for the UTAP. Now the audio coming over the camera or whatever HDMI device you've connected is coming through. You can see my voice is moving the input level. Now that we've got it set up, we can close the settings box and continue to wait to enter the room. I'm going to click the Join with Computer Audio. And as you can see, the camera is now showing up as my feed into Zoom. Another interesting feature we could do here is go up to the meeting information and click that shield and go back into settings. If you head into the statistics area, you can access stats about your stream going in and out of Zoom. Let's go ahead and click the video tab and we can see that we're sending currently a 640 by 360 resolution at roughly 26 frames per second. The capture rate and the resolution will be dependent on several factors. The UTAP is capable of 1080p capture, but Zoom will down-res the stream depending on network conditions, CPU and GPU speed, as well as other factors. Now you know how to connect a UTAP into a Windows computer to use in an application like Zoom. Again, any application that can use a video capture source can use the UTAP. This has been an overview of the UTAP 3G SDI and HDMI devices. These devices are small, rugged, and reliable for professional live video capture you need in your production tools on a Windows, Mac, or Linux computer. Thanks for watching.